you know, like I told the team, losing's hard. Um, it's hard on you as an individual. It's hard on you as a group. Uh, it challenges your attitude. It challenges your character. It challenges how you stay together and believe in each other. Um, so we, you know, you have to deal with all those things when you when you lose your first three games. And what we need to do is is count on the leadership that we have from within the team because we do have some some guys that really care and really played hard the other night, put everything they could into the game. Um, and I and I do like I like our attitude, you know, but. All those things are going to be challenged right now. So the number one job I have is to keep the team together, continue to focus, continue to work hard. And really the biggest thing for this week is to improve and focus on ourselves, you know, and getting better. Um, and the issue is us, is how we go about our business, how we play the game. Uh, offensively, we've struggled. You know, we haven't done um, the things we normally do. Uh, we've had uncertainty at the quarterback position, um, and we've kind of tried to manage it with the first three games that we played, knowing that they were going to be tight games. Who gave us the best opportunity to win that game? You know, and that's that's kind of how we went about it. Uh, nobody separated themselves and said, "I'm the guy." So we have to continue to, to work through that and, you know, see where we're at with the, with the quarterback spot. But uh, besides the quarterback spot, you know, we haven't played real well on the offensive front. Uh, we haven't ran the ball the way we need to run the football, and that takes a lot of pressure off the quarterback when you can run the football. So that will certainly be a point of emphasis in, in practice and, you know, in, in uh, how we go about our business this week. Um, I have liked the fact on offense that we've gotten a lot of production from some of our young guys, you know, but it's been inconsistency, um, which is what you get from young guys. You know, the, the ability to play hard and play fast every play and really understand that one or two plays a game might make the difference and you don't know which one it is. So that's why you have to go hard every single play. Um, so we have, you know, that's where we're at on offense, and certainly we're, we're going to improve. Uh, we'll make sure we get better. There's no doubt about that, and I think our guys work hard. So, um, you know, the, the, the schedule that we played has not allowed us to play a lot of guys. You know, it'd be where you get different guys in there and develop. And um, But I did like what I saw from Lucas McNeil. We were able to get him in the game. Um, Keola Mahoney's gotten better in practice, understanding his assignments. It, for him, it's really not the issue of ability and how to play the game. It's really just knowing the offense yet, and getting here late and not, you know, not really picking the offense up quick enough. Um, uh, but he is starting to understand it better. So we need to make sure that we get him in there and get some work and, um, you know, try to develop a few more guys on that offensive front. Defensively, we've played well at times. We've been inconsistent. Uh, we're not stopping the run the way we need to stop the run. Some of that issue is caused by the offense. You know, when, when you're really good on defense and you get a lot of sacks and you make a lot of plays, you're playing with a lead. The offense goes out and, and goes up and down the field and score points. You're playing with a lead. Well, now you force their hand. And we have not been able to do that. You know, I, I put a lot of that on the offensively. We haven't been able to force them to throw the football. We haven't forced them, um, you know, to have to play the way they don't want to play. So they've been able to try to run the ball and be patient with running the ball. And uh, and they've been close games now. We've been right in there. You know, we just haven't been able to get over the top. And we've played some real good competition. So. Uh, we're just going to continue to work hard at it. Um, like I said, I, I like our I like our players on our team. I'm certainly uncomfortable being 0-3. It's not something we're very used to. Um, it's a new experience. Uh, but what I know is you keep working hard, keep a positive attitude, and good things will happen. You mentioned quarterback uncertainty. Are you inclined at all to just name one guy and stick with him? Or I mean, that's what we would like to see happen. You know, that's what we'd have liked to have seen take care of itself. 
um, but you really haven't had any separation the way we wanted to. I did feel like going into the last game that, that it was going to be a close game and that Kyle um, gave us the best chance to make a play or two throwing the ball that, that would help us win the game. Yeah, I mean, we need to work at it this week in practice and give, you know, give some opportunities there, um, you know, to see who it's going to be. You had a, a couple of plays there where um, Jackson would come in with Bonacon and Radcliffe. Did you like what you saw with that? Yeah, yeah, I thought they executed it well. You know, it gave us an opportunity on short yardage, and then we tried to carry it on for a little while. Um, and they, they did execute it well. It's a good package for us. Um, it's hard to stop. And, uh, you know, I, I thought that they both did their role very well. It's a little different for Reggie. How's he handle that? Uh, he's doing well. Reggie is one of the greatest kids in the world. All Reggie wants to do is try to find a way to help us win games. Well, you talked about the year, too, about the players and how difficult it is. What about you? I mean, you've never gone through this kind of a stream before. What, how are you? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, you know, one time I got in the elevator. I was at UCLA. And we were beat. I was coaching at Arizona State. We were playing UCLA. And I got in the elevator, and uh, Homer Smith got in with me. And, and uh, I, was, I was young. I was just standing there, and I felt pretty good because we were ahead of him. We weren't expected to beat him. And Homer got in there and turned um, his back to me and started pounding his head against the wall. <laughs> and I said to the GA that was with me at the time, I said, hey, man, if I ever get like that, just shoot me. <laughs> well, I think he just loaded his gun. <laughs> so that's about where I'm at. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's a great question. I, I really don't know. I really don't know the answer to that. I think it's, I think sometimes when you, you know, year to year, the competition gets there and guys are close and defenses are good, you know, and, and you really have to put a guy in the fire to find out how he's going to, you know, be able to handle it all. How are you going to handle the noise? How are you going to handle the pressure? How are you going to handle the pass rush? So sometimes it takes just a little while to, to figure that out. This Sanford team, looking at the three games you've already played, do they have any similarities to the style that you've already seen or is this going to be a new style for the team? Uh, yeah, there's some similarities. You know, we played uh, Murray State last year, um, and they run the same offense. Uh, he does a great job with it. They're going to run fast tempo. They're going to, you know, throw the ball. They got a big quarterback with a strong arm. They got two really good wide receivers that have made a lot of plays and can catch the ball. So they're going to try to go fast on us. Uh, a lot of a lot of it will be very similar to what Murray did last year. Defensively, they'll, they're a little different package than um, he kept the same defensive coordinator that's been at Sanford. They play good defense. They got a lot of seniors, guys that we've seen on video a lot. I thought they defended Auburn and TCU well last year when they played them. Um, they were playing really good defense, and then they ran into a good football team last weekend that, that did a good job blocking them and running and throwing the ball. So um, they do look like a good football team on video. Yeah, that, you know, one of the things that you, you, you try to do when you lose a game is um, not let your emotions take over in the locker room after the game. So I've always found the best thing to do is be short, be to the point, and then we come back in and have our team meeting on uh, Sunday. Or in, in that case, we had it Friday afternoon. So uh, probably wasn't real quiet Friday afternoon. Maybe I should have been. So. He's back looking better. Yeah, he's back looking better. And, and uh, he had a good week last week of throwing the football. Um, but we got to just see how it goes. But he did, he did throw the football last week closer to where he was at before he got injured. So all four guys could be in the mix. Yeah, you know, I don't know. I, I think right now you, you kind of look at uh, who's been in there playing already. And, and we just try to keep Will coming along and getting better. Good 
Yeah, well, defensively, you got Keith Kelsey and James Burgess and Sheldon Rankins. The, those guys, have, um, it means a lot to them. They care tremendously. Um, they work hard. So I think that's the biggest thing is, is they show their teammates how hard they work. And that, that's the first part of leadership right there. You know, offensively, Epps does a good job with trying to help us and keep the team together. Um, and then we're kind of, you know, searching. We're kind of searching to see, you know, who else is stepping up because guys really making plays are young, you know, are real young. So it's it's a situation where um, we the leadership offensively keeps evolving. Is that something you also want to see from the quarterback other than just playmaking, though, with somebody who's got more of a presence and a command? Yeah, you know, I thought that's what Kyle provided to us. He's a real competitor, and he's a little fiery. And that was, you know, when he came in, and obviously last year against Kentucky, but in the Houston game this year, I thought his emotional involvement and his fire helped everybody else elevate their game a little bit more. Um, so that was one of the reasons that we kind of gave him the nod last week. What was the, what was the thing that Kyle maybe didn't do that, that you would like to have seen solidify that job? Yeah, again, when you play the quarterback, it's about decision making and execution. So we missed on some decisions. We missed on some execution. Um, but it's all 11 guys, too, there. It's a lot easier to execute when you have space there's no bodies around you because we're doing a great job setting the pocket and widening the pocket. It's a lot easier to play quarterback when you have that type of space and when guys can separate and get open. And um, it's just a work in progress. What kind of bright spots are you seeing with the offensive line? They, they, they've been catching a lot of criticism, but are you seeing anything in these games where it kind of gives you a little bit of Yeah, I thought when we, when, in the Houston game, we made some real strides in protection in some of the things we did in the run game. Um, this Clemson team now, they, they are very good up front. Okay? They are very sturdy. They attack gaps. They don't give you a lot of space. They challenge you. you know, one of the things that helps the offensive line is when, you, when you're a little worried about the receivers going deep and making big plays, throwing the ball down the field. A lot of times they committed eight or nine guys to the run you know, to stop the run and, and force you to throw the ball. So it was, uh, you know, the one thing that I thought we did in the second half is we had an opportunity there in the first drive where we mixed it up on some of the quick passing game, some of the play action game, put a nice drive together, went in and scored. And then, you know, in another drive in the fourth quarter, we took the ball, ran some play action, hit some good throws to Travion and got the ball down in scoring position again. Um, but it wasn't enough to win the game. Uh, you know, I don't even remember that. I, I know as a very talented team when we, when I got here, is very you know, 23 seniors and three juniors came out, and you know, we got talent. We're just young and learning. Yeah, certainly, you know, him and, and everybody else. That's one of the things that when you're not having the success that you used to or normally have, that you have to work hard to get your confidence back and believe in yourself. And, you know, he's, I think someone told me, 23 or 24, 23 out of 24 from inside the 40-yard line. It just happened the one he missed was the other night. That's still pretty darn good. So he needs to understand that he's very consistent and a good player. And uh, he'll have his opportunity again, and we're going to need him to make it. Trying to expand on that with the day and age of social media where every fan can be an armchair quarterback instantly. Do you kind of have to tell the team to put themselves in a bubble and not pay attention to that? Yeah, and you do that all the time. You know, you have to do that all the time because with social media, with publicity, mm -hmm. um, there's the good and the bad and the ugly, and they see it all. You know, we all see it all, we all get criticized. You have to be thick-skinned, and that's what I mean when it says it challenges your beliefs and how you go about your business. Well, uh, I truly believe that we know the process, we know how to work, we know how to prepare guys. Uh, we just have to stick to it and you know believe in ourselves, and that's everybody in the in the program right now. Uh, 
uh, from James Quick. Uh, he ran today in uh, the notes that I got from Kyle actually right before I came in here is that he did a nice job of running. We need to wait and see tomorrow if there's any swelling or ill effects from it. Uh, and there's a chance that he'll be on the practice field tomorrow in a limited capacity. Uh, Staples is still a ways away. Um, he's getting better and it's really improving, but we're not sure the timetable yet. Yeah, it, that's what it is. Yeah. You know, anytime you have a sprained knee, there's a degree of tear to the cartilage so or the ligament. So, you know, it's just what degree and how much. But uh, he's, do he's doing a good job. He's really a hard worker, and, and uh, he's coming back. Is Carter still not practicing? He hasn't yet, no. Uh, just uh, something we, you know, we haven't been able to get him on the practice field. Can this start for No, I think opening with a good game is is something that you you know is I've always enjoyed. I've enjoyed the you know preparation for it. I think it's helped our team. You know, um, we had a schedule set and you know, a really good schedule. We just needed a couple more plays. You know, a couple more plays. And, and uh, you know, that's, we are where we're at right now. And what we need to do is focus on just improving and getting better and going out and, and winning this game. Because they're hitting big things, just trying to keep them focused on the big picture that they're going to try to put this segment behind them and think about down the road. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely, you know. And, and you try to do that when you're winning, too. You know, if we're sitting there 3-0, and we'd say, hey, tear off the rear view mirror. What's important is what's in front of you. That's really what we try to do now. You know, we practiced last night. Um, they had a good attitude. They worked hard. Then we kept the young guys out there and practiced them more. And the guys that played in the game went and ran. Um, they conditioned hard. They had good work ethic. Um, we'll come back on Tuesday and, and learn a lot more where we're at. Is there a common thread as to why teams are having success rushing against your defense? Uh, I don't know about a common thread, except for the fact that they, we haven't forced them to play from behind. You know, and uh, they've been able to be patient and keep banging the ball in there and, and uh, eventually making some plays. But we've been, you know, playing pretty good defense at times, but not, not well enough like when we get the lead. You know, that's, uh, that's when the concerns are. Like the other night when we went and scored and took the lead, I felt really good about it, and then they drove right back down and scored. You know, in the fourth quarter at Houston when we took the lead, I felt like, okay, here we go, we're going to win this game, and then they went and scored twice. So it's kind of, you know, one of those things where we need to play better when the game's on the line. How much does Toe add as a receiver? He had a couple big third downs. Yeah, he's a really good receiver. He's got great hands. He can open his hips. I think that's the thing is the ball doesn't have to be perfectly thrown for him to catch it because he can open his hips and adjust his body. Um, and, you know, we're going to continue to work him and, and – uh, Catching the ball, playing more, and and uh, I've liked what I liked what I saw from him. All right. Thanks, Coach. Thank you.